this is Joshua, and I will be your guide as we fly around Michigan's Keweenaw Peninsula. Our journey begins at Houghton Hancock. The Houghton Hancock Bridge was built by the state of Michigan and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in cooperation with the Copper Range Railroad and the Duluth South Shore and Atlantic Railroad. The double-deck vertical lift bridge originally carried vehicular traffic on the top deck and the railroad traffic on the bottom deck. Rail traffic ceased in 1982. Today, the vertical lift span sits in the intermediate level nine months out of the year, while vehicular traffic crosses the old railroad deck, allowing most small boats to pass under the bridge. In the winter, the bridge is lowered and made accessible to snowmobilers and skiers, while vehicles cross the upper deck. The Quincy Mine is an extensive set of copper mines located near Hancock, Michigan. The mine was owned by the Quincy Mining Company and operated between 1846 and 1945, although some activities continued through the 1970s. The Quincy Mine was known as Old Reliable, as the Quincy Mine Company paid a dividend to investors every year from 1868 through 1920. And now we embark on our journey. We begin at Keweenaw Bay.
The Keweenaw Waterway Lower Entrance Light, also known as the Portage Entry Light, is a lighthouse located at the south end of the breakwater at the mouth of the Portage River in Torch Lake Township. It was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 2014. The Jacobsville Lighthouse stands on the bluff line overlooking the Keweenaw Bay. Established in 1855 to help guide ships to the lower portage waterway, the existing light station dates back to 1870. Made of local stone and reaching 45 feet in height, the tower supported a fifth order Fresnel lens which was manufactured in Paris.
beginning as early as 7,000 years ago, and apparently peaking around 3,000 BC, Native Americans dug copper from the southern shore of Lake Superior. This development was possible in large part because in this region, large deposits of copper were easily accessible in surface rock and from shallow diggings. Native copper could be found as large nuggets and wiry masses. Copper as a resource for functional tooling achieved popularity around 3000 BC during the Middle Archaic Stage. The focus of copper working seems to have gradually shifted from functional tools to ornamental objects by the late archaic stage.
Native Americans would build a fire to heat the rock around and over a copper mass, and after heating, pour on cold water to crack the rock. The copper was then pounded out using rock hammers and stone chisels. The Keweenaw's rich deposit of copper were extracted on an industrial scale beginning around the middle of the 19th century. The industry grew through the latter part of the century and employed thousands of people well into the 20th century.
Dowda Lighthouse was constructed in 1869. Only one year later, the light was decommissioned as it was found by navigators to be of no assistance. It was sold to a person willing to conserve the light. The original fourth order Fresnel lens was found, restored, and in 1998 relit. It is still in place and in use. Efforts are being made to maintain the light for the next hundred years.
hard rock mining in the region ceased in 1967. Although copper sulfide deposits continued for some time after in Ontonagon. Running concurrently with the mining boom in the Keweenaw was the white pine lumber boom. Trees were cut for timbers for mine shafts to heat the communities around the large copper mines and to help build a growing nation. Much of the logging at the time was done in the winter due to the ease of operability with the snow. Due to the logging practices at that time, the forest of the Keweenaw looks much different today from a hundred years ago.
Iowa ceded all claims to 30,000 square miles of the Upper Peninsula to the United States government. The copper rush was on. In 1843, before the Western Gold Rush of the 49ers, thousands came to the copper country to try their luck. The first mining rush came to Copper Harbor. All travel was by boat. There were no roads. Copper Harbor became a bustling sea town. In the winter, travel was by dog sled. Boom towns sprang up everywhere around the mines. These mines produced the world's copper. The rush of copper hunters came clamoring ashore at picturesque Copper Harbor, Ontonagon, and Eagle Harbor. Boom towns sprang up everywhere a ship could safely find shelter from Lake Superior.
Eagle Harbor is a small village in the Keweenaw Peninsula facing north overlooking Lake Superior. The red brick Eagle Harbor Lighthouse sits on the rocky entrance to the harbor and is a working lighthouse as it still guides mariners across the northern edge of the Keweenaw Peninsula. Scuba divers will find many wrecks just offshore in the Keweenaw Underwater Preserve.
Eagle River was once a booming mine town, as well as a booming shipping port back in its heyday. Cliff Mine, which is located just a few miles south of Eagle River, used this port to ship their copper. In 1861, Keweenaw County was created and made Eagle River the county seat. Now it is the perfect place for a quiet retreat. Sand Hills Lighthouse was an active lighthouse on the shore of Lake Superior and has been converted into a bed and breakfast. It is located in Amik in Keweenaw County. It was listed in the National Park Register of Historic Places in 1994. for joining with us on this amazing adventure as we share in the beauty and natural wonder of the state of Michigan.